good. Yes. So I am going to share my screen and we're going to begin the, uh, we're going to begin mm -hmm. to do this stuff I talked about in my email. Daniel, you can see it. Aya basi naenda kuonyesha screen yangu alafu nitaongea yale mambo ambayo nilikuwa nimezungumzia juu katika email. So the first thing I want to share uh, I did some diagrams about this business about is man a three part being or a two part being. Asi nilifanya mchoro huu kwa ili swala la mtu akiwa katika and I, I want to do this because, as I said before, global pastor training does not teach that whether man is a three-part being or a two-part being. It is a debate that largely has no meaning in my, uh, from my point of view and generates controversy. And global pastor training isn't interested in controversy. Asi ni mefanya hivi kwa kusudi kwa sababu katika global field, global pastor training haifundishi mafundisho haya ya suwa kama haya ambaya naleta upishi na global pastor training haina haja ya kueza kuingia katika mafunzo ya nao leta upishi. Rather... Global Pastor Training simply focuses on the words of the Lord Jesus Christ found in Matthew 10, 28. Where he simply says, Do not fear man who has the power to kill the body but not the soul. Rather, fear him who has the power to cast both soul and body into hell. And so with that as a background, let me say a word about... Uh, the idea of man as a three-part being. So hopefully you can all see on the screen global pastor training, nature of man, illustration one, a possible three-part conception of human nature. Unaweza kuona katika kio chako kwamba kuna global pastor training asili ya mtu ambaye imeelezea mara moja ikionyesha kwamba mtu ana katika inakisiwa mtu ana hali tatu katika kuwa kwake. So I bring up the this is just a depiction now that shows in blue the body the material part of humanity. And then every man has a soul. That the three parter will say consists of mind, will, and emotions typically. In other words, the soul consists of the immaterial but not spiritual parts of man, whatever that means. And then third, man consists of a spirit which is immaterial and spiritual. And that, that's the typical way it would be depicted on a chalkboard by a teacher. And if that's the way you learned it, that's fine. I don't, I'm not interested in no. uh, debating the point. But 
but for the sake of our regional teachers, I want to go into this, not because I want them to do this at a workshop, never, 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 but so that they'll be aware of the teaching. Asifanya hivi sio kwamba hati wao wasiwahi kuhusika na hii kabisa kabisa lakini kuna namna ambayo nataka iwe inaweza kufundishwa. The second picture is similar to the first one. Global pastor training nature of man illustration to possible three part conception of human nature. Yine ya pili ni kama hivyo tu ambaye inaonyesha uh, jinsi mwanadamu alivyo katika hali yake ya asili. Again the blue represents the body, the material part of man. Ya samawati um, inaashiria mwili ambayo mwanadamu anaonekana. Every man has a soul. Kwamba mwanadamu ana nafsi that according to the three part theory consists of mind will and emotions in other words the immaterial but not spiritual part of man whatever that means and then again, man also consists of a spirit, which is immaterial and spiritual. In both illustrations, the spirit is dead until it is made alive by the rebirth. Katika hiyo hali yote vile ambayo imeelezewa roho ni kwamba imekufa mpaka tena imehuishwa katika kuzaliwa upya or others may teach that uh, unsaved man has no spirit until he is saved and then he receives the spirit na wengine wanaweza fundisha kwamba mtu mwenye hajaokoka yeye hana roho atakapookolewa ndipo sasa anapewa roho this First illustration is the typical way that it's shown with the spirit being a central part of the soul. But it is also possible to think of humanity this way. Which is really uh, false and misleading. But because the three parter says that the soul consists of mind, will, and emotions, because he says that, in other words, the the soul consists of the immaterial but not spiritual parts of man. It's it's possible to think of the spiritual dimension as something else in man that has no connection to the soul at all. And a conception like this is highly creates a lot of problems. So what global pastor training teaches global pastor training is simply what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 28. That man has a body, the spiritual or the material part. And that man has a soul. 
And the soul is immaterial and spiritual. Na hiyo nafsi haiwezi kuonekana lakini ni ya kiroho. It consists of mind, will and emotions. Ambayo ndani yake ndio kuna mawa akili, hisia za mtu, mawazo ya mtu na hisia za mtu. And what are mind, will and emotions? Na sasa tunapozungumzia hiyo inamaanisha nini? Well, mind, will and emotions are sim- simply sensible demonstrations of the immaterial spirit in man. Namaanisha kwamba akili uh, ile hisia ile hali ya kutaka kufanya na hisia ni ile inayodhihirisha roho ya mwanadamu ambaye haionekani. In the case of unbelievers the soul is dead as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1. Mm-hmm. Na kwa wale ambao hawajaokoka ama hawajaamini vile Paulo anavyosema katika Efeso 1 ni kwamba nafsi yao imekufa. I'm sorry Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and again Ephesians 2 verse 5. Wa Efeso 2 moja na Efeso 5 uh, mstari wa ngapi hapo? And the soul the spiritual element of man is made alive in the spirit for believers. Na sehemu ile ya nafsi ambayo iliyo katika ya kiroho katika mwanadamu inafanywa hai kwa waumini. Made alive by the Holy Spirit in believers I should say. Katika wa Kristo inamaanisha anafanywa hai na waumini. Now to go back to the first illustration. If this is your view of humanity that's fine. I'm not interested in persuading or arguing about it. Nikirudi katika jinsi tulivyoelezea mara ya kwanza kama hivyo ndivyo unavyoona kufundisha mwanadamu katika utatu sina haja ya kupishana lakini ninasema hivi But again for the purposes of global pastor training we don't enter into this debate we don't reference this debate we simply quote what Jesus says in Matthew 10:28 ili kwa sababu ya global pastor training sisi hatuzungumzii kwa hii mwanadamu akiwa sehemu tatu jinsi ilivyo bali sisi tunanukuu tu yale ambayo Yesu alisema katika Mathayo 10:28 And Jesus clearly says do not fear a man who only has the power to kill the body Yesu anasema kwamba usimuogope yule mwanadamu ambaye ana uwezo kuua mwili peke yake but rather fear God who has the power to cast both soul and body into hell. Bali uweze kumwogopa yule ambaye ana uwezo wa kutupa mwili na nafsi jahanamu. Now when Jesus says that does anyone want to suggest that Jesus is saying that God has the power to cast soul and body into hell but not the spirit? Yesu anaposema hivyo kuna mtu anaweza kupendekeza aseme kwamba Mungu ana uwezo tu wa kutupa mwili na nafsi jehanamu na asitupe roho? Uh, I think not. Sidhani hivyo. So whether you think of human nature this way, three part ama unafikiria kwamba asili ya mwanadamu ni kwa njia hii yeye hapo katika utatu or this way, two part au kwa njia hii sehemu mbili We don't get into that debate. The schoolmen love to debate this stuff. We don't go there. Sisi hatuingi katika masuala hii ya ubishi. Walio watu wa shuleni ndio wanapenda hapo. Sisi hatutaki. We simply quote what Jesus says in Matthew 10:28 and then we move on. Sisi tu tunanukuu yale ambayo Yesu alisema katika Mathayo 10:28 na tunasonga mbele. And the three parter will assume that Jesus means soul and spirit. Na hiyo inamaanisha kwamba Yesu alimaanisha nafsi na roho. And the two parter will assume that Jesus simply means body and soul which also comprises the spiritual dimension of man. Na sehemu mbili inamaanisha kwamba Yesu alimaanisha nafsi na mwili ambayo pia inahusisha ile mwanadamu jinsi alivyo. And if somebody raises a question at question time, na iwapo mtu atauliza swali wakati wa maswali, then we say, basi sema tunasema, 
Global pastor training doesn't get into a debate about this. Global pastor training hatuingii katika upishi kubishana mashindano juu ya mambo kama hayo. It's enough for our purposes and it's enough for the purposes of the workshop that we simply hear and understand the words of Jesus. Inatosha kwetu sisi na hata kwa ajili ya kongamano ili sisi tu tusikie maneno ya Yesu peke yake. Do not fear man who has the power to kill the body but not the soul. Usiogope mtu aliye na uwezo wa kuua mwili na bali sio nafsi. But fear but rather fear God who has the power to cast both soul and body into hell. Ali unaogope mtu aliye na uwezo wa kuangamiza nafsi na mwili na nafsi katika jina So thank you for listening. Does anybody have any questions? Asante sana kwa kusikia. Kuna yote aliye na swali. sasa wabako anauliza wakati yule yesu alisema kwa ule mwizi msalabani leo hii utakuwa na mimi paradiso alikuwa anaongea juu ya nini And so when he told the thief on the cross that this day you would be with me in paradise. Clearly Jesus is, is, is affirming to him that his spirit would not go to the place of torment, but that his spirit would go into fellowship with God because of faith in Christ. Yesu anadhibitisha akamwambia kwamba kusema kwamba roho yake haitaenda mahali pa mateso bali itaenda mahali pa tuliza kwa sababu ya imani ndani ya Kristo. In other words his condition after death would be exactly the same as that of Moses and all the, and David and all the saints who'd gone before. Na maanisha kwamba hali yake baada ya kufa itakuwa kama ya wale wengine kama Musa, Daudi na wale watakatifu walioenda hapo baadaye. And his condition would be the same as Peter and Paul and James and, and Stephen and all the saints who would come after. Na hali yake itakuwa kama Peter, Petro, yani Petro, Paulo, Yakobo, uh, Stefano na wale wengine watakao kuwa njia kama ya imani who would lie in physically lie in their grave but the spirit would be with god until the great day comes when the archangel shouts and the heavenly trumpet blows and the sun descends na mwana wa damu atashuka and all the dead in Christ shall be raised na wote wa ndani ya Kristo watafuliwa and we who are left alive will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord and thus we shall ever be with the Lord na wale ambao tumebaki tuko hai tutanyakuliwa kwenda kutana na Bwana mwingine na ndivyo atakavyokuwa na Bwana milele and one of those who will rise in that day will be that thief on the cross na mmoja wao atakao fuka siku ile ni yule mwizi aliyeokoka pale msalabani. So spiritually he's in the presence of God but the day is coming when his spirit yes. will be reunited again with his resurrected body and thus he shall ever be with the Lord. Amen. Roho hapo pamoja na Mungu na atakuwa katika mwili ambao ndio fufuka na sisi sote tutakuwa pamoja na Mungu. Opaku. Amen. Yes sir. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can see I uh, Presto is not here for for now so you can continue in English. Okay. And so uh, brothers all of you listen 1 Corinthians chapter 15 if you're not familiar with it 
Read yes, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the great chapter on the resurrection. Jesus is the first fruits. That's why he's already raised. And God is simply waiting until the full harvest is ripened. And then he will stick in his sickle and he will reap. And those who are destined to eternal life will be gathered to the Lord Jesus Christ, both soul and body. And those who are destined to eternal destruction will enter into the lake of fire, both soul and body. And therefore, let us fly to Jesus. Let us fly to Jesus and be saved. Amen. Amen, amen. All right, brothers, amen, I amen. hope that helps. I also uh, today want to say a word about bookkeeping. Did Oyelo ever join us, Brother Daniel? He hasn't, he hasn't responded yet. I'm still waiting on him. All right, I'm going to go through this. Um, and uh, Brother Daniel, maybe you can help him. Uh, I don't know what to do. Lord, uh, get Festo online. If you want him here, get him here. I, I want to share my screen again. So this time I'm going to be sharing a, uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Let me ask you, can everybody see the spreadsheet? Yeah, I see it. Great. Yes, okay. I can see it. All right. So we have some dates over here. And I've highlighted, you can see the green box around that box. So just for the sake of discussion, we're saying this is a uh, the beginning of a worksheet for Oyelo, who is going to start a workshop in uh, Tanzania, I mean in Congo, uh, in the next couple of weeks. And so he's wanting to know how to keep it. So always, always, always begin the, your beginning balance. You should always show it as zero, that you have no U.S. dollars, USD, U.S. dollars in the balance. You should always show that you have no Kenyan shillings in the balance. And then whatever your local currency is, FC stands for Franc Congolese. You know, they use French there. So FC, Franc Congolese. And he, he began with nothing. And then on 9-15, on the 15th of September, he received from Thomas. So in from Thomas, and this is just for illustration, let's say we sent him 200 US dollars to get started on the workshop. And so he entered, he puts $200 in the USD in column and it automatically updates the balance, the USD balance to $200 because there's a formula in there. And you can see that formula up here. That formula says equals, in other words, the, the, the value that you want in box E3. If we come back down here, we'll just highlight this for a moment. You see that that box is E under E column, and it's on the third row. It's E3. So the value that we want in E3 is equal to the value that's in E2, which is zero, plus the value that is in C3, which is 200 minus the value that is in D3, which is zero. So now the value that appears in E3 is zero plus 200 minus zero equals 200. And because that formula is there, this column will automatically fill with a quantity every time you put a number 
in either column C or column D. So Oyelo got $200 in from Thomas and it automatically shows he's got 200 US dollars available to him. Now, for the sake of the workshop, Oyelo is going to exchange the next day, he's got the money. So the next day he's going to exchange. So on the 16th of September, he exchanges to Bronc Congolese. So in an exchange, you have money coming out of one column and going into money in another column. So in this case, he has money coming out of US dollars. So he only has a hundred US dollars left. It's not going into Kenyan shillings. So we're going to zero that out and leave that at zero. You see what happens automatically that balance zeroed up there. And now he's got Frank Congolese in the amount of $240. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a, well, first of all, let me fix the, the representation because it's representing like it's dollars. So let me fix that. We'll go to number, currency, get rid of the decimal points. And we get rid of the dollar sign, just use nothing. Say okay. Now, wait a minute, bear with me. This is under format cells, currency. We want no sign to appear. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to copy that and paste it all the way down the page to match the rest of these. And it'll automatically propagate that formula. See, there's a formula in there that says plus K2, the value that's in K2, which is zero, plus what's in I3, which is zero, plus J4, which is zero. So it still has zero there. But now on line four, where he's exchanged money, he's got a hundred dollars that's come out. That's reduced his hundred dollar amount or his dollar amount to a hundred dollars. At the same time, it's increased his front Congolese to 240,000. To uh, two hundred forty thousand. Let me see why that's not quite right. He used one hundred forty thousand. Yeah, it should be. So just hang on a minute, and I'll fix it. So we've got plus K3 plus I4 plus minus J5. Well, it's clearly not right, so I don't know why it's not right. Good. Yeah. K40. It's 240,000. Then, so we know it is, but I'm trying to make one. the formula show that. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So now that I got the formula correct, the, the balance is correct and it'll be correct all the way down. The next thing that happened is we're saying that on September 17th, Oyelo bought gas for the mission. He didn't, he did not buy it in Kenyan shillings, so that's he wrote out. He bought it in Franc Congolese, a hundred thousand shillings or hundred thousand francs worth of gas. So I need to do this again. We're going to copy that and paste this all the way down and try to get it straight here. 
Yes, there we go. So he bought 100,000 francs worth of gas. He now has 140,000 francs left. Then on the 17th, he ate dinner as he was headed toward the workshop or maybe arrived. He didn't spend it in Kenyan shillings. He spent it in franc Congolese, 10,000 franc Congolese for supper, which I take it is not a lot of money. So he now has 130,000 Congolese available to him. Then on the 18th, he bought materials for the workshop, had them printed. He didn't do it in Kenyan shillings. He did it in franc Congolese. He spent 120,000 francs, so he has 10,000 left. Oops, he's nearly out of money, so what does he do? On the 21st, he exchanged money again from the balance he's holding in US dollars. He took out another 100 US dollars, leaving him no US dollars. He did not turn them into Kenyan shillings. He has zero Kenyan shillings. He turned them into franc Congolese and now has 250,000 franc Congolese. He turned them into franc Congolese, 250,000. And so this is how he would continue until he spent whatever the budget was. And we're sending, when, when you get ready, when you're certified and you're getting ready to lead a workshop, we'll send you this sheet pre-set up with the balances and all of that so that you can keep track. Mm -hmm. And what we encourage you to do is not do it every day in the computer. We encourage you to print out these sheets blank. Okay. okay. And, well, let me finish. And then use the blank sheets and write in pencil and figure it by hand each day. And the key thing is that each day, the balance that is shown on the paper should match the balance that you actually have in your hand. So on the 18th, when he got done, and he would do this by hand, Oyelo would show that he had $100 on his person somewhere, mm -hmm. and he would also have 10,000 franc Congolese remaining. And if the money in his pocket doesn't match the money on the paper, then there's a problem somewhere and he needs to figure that out. And if he figures it out day by day, he can keep it straight. If he waits mm. until the end of the project to try to figure it out, he'll never figure it out, will he, Daniel? Mm -hmm. No, he won't. <laughs> no, he won't. And we've we've learned that over time, haven't we, Daniel? Yeah, uh, I, I think what you need to do is to have a a notebook. Anyone he spends, he he jot it down, and then go home and then put it on the spreadsheet. Could be good. Yes, Opaku, that's exactly right. Thank you. But I, I reached out to Daniel to get him to respond because Daniel and Thomas have been doing this a lot longer. They know what a challenge it can be to keep up, right, brother? Exactly. And yet, in order for us to be good stewards, so why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Well, to whom much is entrusted, uh, much is expected. And so, um, it's, it's required of a steward that one be found faithful. Up here, when we sent Oyelo $200, Thomas sent him 200 US dollars. That's not money that uh, we're sending to, to Oyelo to pay his rent or to buy groceries or to pay his light bill. That's money that we're giving him as a steward that he has to make full accounting for and be able to um, 
show where it's all gone, either in US dollars or in franc Congolese. If he's holding a certified GPT workshop, we will pay him a stipend when he's done because the laborer is worthy of his hire and we don't expect anybody to lead these workshops for nothing. Uh, the stipend is currently 200 US dollars and he will receive separate from this after he fully accounts for all of these things, including receipts. So that for instance, when he spends 100,000 francs for gas, he needs to have a receipt and he takes a picture of that receipt and he turns it in at the end, a receipt for the dinner, a receipt for the materials and so forth. We check the uh, receipts against the expenses and then once everything reconciles and then we look at the attendance sheets and once everything reconciles, then we send uh, the teacher his stipend and the stipend is his. He doesn't have to give account for it, except to God. We don't care what he does with his stipend. That's between him and the Lord. And the stipend belongs to him and his family uh, in the Lord. But these monies are not his monies. These are monies being held in trust. Any questions from any team member about any of this? <laughs> Daniel, I see Festo is back. Do you want to? I'll put it back up if you like, and you can walk through it quickly for him. I think he was able to see, so I'll just ask you as a question. He can ask, then we can go on from there. Festo, kuna swali umeskia vile yambavo daktari amelese. Yeah. Uh, the question is, be, before uh, the conference, do the regional uh, teacher submit a budget or how do you do it? Or you send a budget? How do you go about that? Thank you for that right. question, Opaku. You don't know what Opaku and Olisa Kabla Mkutano Ifanike. Budget in a corner of Ragani, Uduma de Natuma, Ama, Munyanafanya, and Natuma budget. We do work on a budget beforehand, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Nafanya Kazi, na budget Kabla, na here to Tazumzia, Madam Fupio Jao. Before we go there, though, let me uh, give us a few more minutes to see if there are any questions, especially from Festo, who speaks Swahili only. Basi kabla tusonge huko ebu tupata maswali aswa kutoka kwa festo ambaye lugha yake msingi ni Kiswahili. Festo kuna swali uulize. Festo una swali? Una swali? Hello. Hello. Zumza. Hello. Zumza. Strengthen our connection, please. Make the connections, heavenly angels, repair and make the connection. For the sake of the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Tell him to unmute, Daniel. All right. So I think he's having, uh, I just told him to connect using what he used last time because we were able to hear him clearly last time when he was teaching. 
So okay. hopefully we'll do that. All right, then we're going to move on. And we're so happy uh, Festa, I mean, oh yeah, um, Opaku. We're so happy Opaku can be with us and he asked a very good question. I'm gonna put up a budget here in just a minute. Basi tunafurahia zaidi kwa sababu ndugu yetu Opaku yuko na sisi na ameweza kusikia kusikiza nitaweka budget hapa kwa dakika chache. Give me a minute here. Okay, you should now be able to see a budget. Sasa unaweza kuona budget iko pale. No. It's a sample GPT workshop. Okay, this is a this is a the budget form that we use for all of our workshops. And I've just called it sample, Regional Teacher Workshop Budget 2020, somewhere in Africa. Basi ni mfano tu wa karatasi na tumika ya budget ina ufanyika wa maali fulani Afrika. Normally, there's some small amount of money available for what we call pre-conference work or pre-workshop work. And you can look at the green box. You can see that uh, each one is LS, LS, LS. That means lump sum. So team expenses, a total lump sum of $100. dollars Matumizi ya kikundi unaona kama jumla ya dola miya moja. A total for local arrangements expenses, which is usually airtime for guys to help get the word out. Ambao labdo unaona kama hapo wandalizu wa wenyeji kama dola miya moja ambaye nakuwa mara nyingi ni mazumuzo na uli ya kuanda mkutano. And then another hundred dollars budgeted for other pre-con expenses in a lump sum of a hundred dollars. Nabia matumizi mengine ya mandalizi ya kabla ya mkutano kama dola miya moja. Which might be say for accommodation for a night if they have to stay overnight. Pengine kama ni malazi kama inabili wa kue na mahali kwa siku moja. Or something else. So in this example, now we go to column G. Uh, these are money. Column F is the actual budget in U.S. dollars. Uh, and then this is G is money is actually spent against a given category in U.S. dollars. So in this case, we'll say that the, the team had uh, 90 total dollars of expenses in gas, snacks, meals, and so forth. Pengine naweza kusema kikundi chetu kilikuwa na matumizi ya jumla kama ya dola 90 kununua chakula, kununua mafuta, usafiri na vitu vingine vinavyohusikana hiyo. Even, even overnight accommodation should be counted up here. Is team expense. Hata, hata ila hali ya malazi ya kikundi chetu ambacho kimelala sasa inakuwa imepatikana katika matumizi ya kikundi pale juu. And then column H is simply showing how much budget is left for that particular item. And by doing this, it helps us keep track as we go. 
Uh, tunapofanya hivyo inatusaidia kuwa angalifu kujua ni, tulifanya nini tunapoendelea. So we had a total budget of $100. We had total expense for pre-conference work for the team of $90, which leaves total dollars, $10 left for that item. Mbaya sasa tulikuwa na matumizi ya jumla ya dola miyamoja, tukawa na matumizi ya kikundi ya dola tisini, na sasa katoachia masalia ya dola kumi kwa haya hai wa matumizi ya wa, wenyeji wa wenye kikundi. Wenye kikundi. The next item is local arrangements expenses. Na utapata sasa kuenda chini matumizi mingine ni matumizi ya maandalizi ya wenyeji. And uh, let's say this is, this is, we're working with Peter. And Peter said, no, we'll take care of it. We, we've got it. We've got it. We'll handle it some way or another. Labda tusema kwa mfano tunafanya na Peter. Na Peter nasema tumejua, tumepata, na sisi tutatu. So the ministry didn't have to spend anything there. And so the amount of remaining for that area is $100. And then let's say that uh, we, I don't even know we had to buy uh, they, they were going to do a mail out or something, and so they wanted some help getting the mailing out. Or we had to host a meeting for the local arrangements committee and had to help defray the cost of that expense or something. Who knows? So we spent fifty dollars of the hundred, we have fifty dollars remaining. So for the entire pre conference. Uh, work we budgeted 300 we spent 140 we have 160 remaining kwa hivyo katika hali ya matumizi tuliyopanga kabla ya mkutano ule tutaka tutumie 300 lakini sasa tukatumia 140 na sasa tumebakisha 160 now these are the typical areas of expense that we may or may not be into for a given workshop Na hizi ndiyo maeneo ambao huenda matumizi huwa inausika katika kongamana tunapokuwa nayo. It includes the possibility of us having to help pay for conference food, having to help pay for overnight attendees for breakfast and supper. Huwa inausisha pengine sisi tunaweza kusaidia katika kununua chakula cha kongamano ama wale walio toka mbali waweze kupata chakula cha jioni au na kiamsha kinywa asubuhi. The ministry having to pay for travel cost scholarships to get people back and forth. The possibility of having to buy mattresses or something else for people to get to stay overnight. For tier two, three, four, five, and six, uh, there's an adjustment in here if, if uh, because everybody has to buy their workbook to get that Sasa, money and account for it. Inapofika katika awamu ya pili ya tatu na kuendelea, basi kuna kuwa na mabadiliko hapa kwa sababu kila mtu lazima jinulia kitabu chake na kwa hivyo hizo pesa lazima zikadiriwe. And then there are rental items for tents and seats in 19. A rental item for sound in 20. Na katika sisemu mustari wa 19 na kuishirini kuna kuwa kuweza kupata mahema au viti au viombo vya kutumia. Anything budgeted for tea time. Ukiwa kuwapo na wakatu wa barini sana, wakatu wa chakuna kuwa na chai. Anything budgeted for uh, the local arrangements committee expenses? Anything budgeted for registrars? 
kinakadiria kwa sababu ya wasajili. Now in a typical regional teacher workshop where the nominal attendance is going to be somewhere between 50 to 100 pastors. Katika ila hali ya kawaida ya kongamano linaloongozwa na mwalimu wa maeneo ambao tutapata kwamba mahudhurio ni watu 150 hadi 100. Global pastor training will pay for one registrar. A global pastor training italipia msajili mmoja tu. Notice that in B 24, I've changed zero to one. Na ukiangalia hapo semu ya ba, ukienda chini yake 24, nimebarilisha kutoka sufuri hadi moja. And when I hit enter, it automatically updates. Na napo ingiza mara moja kwa moja, inabarilisha jumla ya matupesa za hapo. And the budget in local money in this case Kenyan shillings is 5000 not 0 na sasa katika hali hii katika eneo hili pesa za nazotakana kama ni kwa Kenya ni sasa shilingi 1500 and then the uh, US dollar budget is calculated off of that and that's 50 US dollars na katika fedha za Marekani inajipatia katika dola 50 and we haven't spent any of it yet. Which means we have $50 remaining in that area of the budget. So I'm going to come up here to miscellaneous. And miscellaneous... I can't even tell you what miscellaneous is. All I can tell you is that it almost is always necessary. Let's say that, uh, let's say it's gasoline to run the generator because uh, the power went out and we had to run everything off the generator, Daniel. And so we had yeah, to buy gas for the generator. Sure. Same pengine to stima ilipotea na ikabili tutafute generator, tukanua mafuta generator. Pengine kila siku maybe like say like a thousand shillings. Three thousand, let's say three thousand. Okay. So, and this is a, a lump sum, one time deal, three thousand Kenyan shillings to buy gas. Sasa unapata hapa ni pesa mbaya mara moja, shilingi elfu tatu ya kununua mafuta. And then I've just got to populate my formulas here. And so now we've got 3,000 Kenyan shillings. Sasa tunakuwa na shilingi elfu tatu za Kenya. Added to the budget for this purpose. Mbaya mesidisho katika makadirio kwa kusudi hili. Uh, and this is the beginning of the workshop, so it's in 3,000 shillings is 30 U.S. dollars. But at the beginning of the workshop, none of that money has yet been spent. So that means we have $30 to spend uh, for miscellaneous. Local arrangements, uh, expenses. Well, And we know there are going to be some, so I changed the zero to a one. Na kutakuwa na wengine labda tuanzia sifuri hadi moja. And so that we had said that uh, it would be as much as 40,000 Kenyan shillings. Which is roughly equivalent to 400 US dollars. But we haven't spent any of it yet, so that's a zero. And so there's 400 dollars remaining for that budget line item. So, tuko na dola mianine ambazo na salia pale katika sehemu hiyo ya matumizi. So, tea. Chai. 
we're not in a position to provide tea for this workshop. It's they can either provide tea or we're not going to have tea. We just don't have Labda. the money. Labda tuta peana chai na kwa hivyo atuta peana chai na basi tutakuwa na hizo pesa. So I put a zero in there. I want to make a score pale. So it's zero Kenyan shillings, it's zero dollars. Zero pesa za Kenya, zero dollar. Nothing spent. I get to make a pale. And zero remaining. Na bado pale ni sifuri. Sound system rent. Kodi viombo vya kutumia. Let's say that again uh, that we're going to use the church sound system. Kwa mfano tuseme tutatumia viombo vya kanisa ile ambaye imetupokea. And we've known this ahead of time so there's nothing in the budget for a sound system. Praise the Lord. Tukua tumejua ile mbeleni basi hapo tutasifu Bwana maana hakuna matumizi ya viombo vya kodi. So that's a zero budget in local money, it's a zero budget in US dollars. Kwa hivyo katika fedha za enyeji hakuna kitu ni sifuri pia ni sifuri katika dola. Nothing has been spent to date. Na kufikia hapo hakuna kilichotumika. And so uh, there's zero remaining in that budget line. Na pia hapo sifuri na baki katika sehemu hiyo ya matumizi. Now we're going to come up here to renting tents and seats. Tutarudi hapo katika maeneo ya kukodi, mahema na viti. And let's say that social distancing is still enforced. Na tuseme pengine bado inabidi watu waweke hatua kutoka mtu hadi mwingine. And so uh, in order to facilitate 100 pastors we're going to have to rent 60 seats. Ili kwamba tukue na wachungaji 100 lazima tukurudi viti 60. Uh which is uh, I, I mean uh, 60 no, we're going to have to rent 60 seats, sorry, 60 seats at 60 shillings a seat. Tutakodi viti stini kwa shilingi stini kwa kila kiti. And that will cover a tarp to uh, to go with those seats. Na basi yu itakuwa imefika pale kuenda na hizo viti. Sorry. So that's 3,600 Kenyan shillings. Ye nafika shilingi alufu tatu miya sita za pesa za Kenya. 36 US dollars. We haven't spent it yet. That means we still have 36 dollars in that budget line item. Dollar salasina sita ya Kenya na kwa hivyo atuja zitumia bado. Tunamasalio ya dollar salasina sita katika hilo hali ya viti na mahema. I'm going to skip line 18 for a minute and we're going to come up here to line 17. Taruka mustari wa kumina nane kwa dakika alafu turudi kwa mustari wa kumina saba. We're expecting a hundred participants at this workshop in Kenya. Basi katika kongamano hili tunatarajia wa maudhuria ya watu miyamoja kwenye kongamano hili. And it's going to cost 135 Kenyan shillings per person for a workbook and a certificate of completion. Kwa hivyo karama. Garama ya kitabu cha masomo na cheti itagarimu shilingi miyamoja na thalatina tano wa kila moja. And this isn't a per day cost, this is a one time cost, so that number is one. Na kwa hivyo siya atini garama ya kila siku lakini ya garama ya mara moja, ndiyo hiyo moja hapo. And so the total budget is 13,500 Kenyan shillings. Kwa hivyo matumizi yote ya jumla ni shilingi elfu kumina tatu na miyatano. Which is $135. We haven't spent any of it yet, so we still have $135 for that um, budget line item. Okay, accommodation scholarships for distant attendees, meaning they've come so far, we need to put them up overnight. Sasa hii nao sema kwamba ni malazi kwa wala ambao na udhuria umetoka mbali na manisha idabiri tuwafanyo walale kwa sababu kukula na kutoka ni mbali ya weze kuenda na kurudi. And for the purpose of our discussion, we're going to say, and this often is the case, we don't have any budget to accommodate people overnight. Na katika hii hali ya mazumuse yetu tuseme hasa hatu na makadrio ya kuweza kuwalaza watu wanao salia. 
So that whole line is simply zero shillings, zero dollars, zero, zero, zero. Na katika eneo hilo lote inafaa iwe ni sifuri, sifuri, sifuri mbaka mwisho. Travel scholarships, that's for people who are either elderly or uh, handicapped and or live more than two or three kilometers away. It's just not possible for them to walk back and forth to the workshop. We do expect that able-bodied pastors within a few kilometers can walk back and forth to the workshop. Na hii hali ya msaada ya kusaidia na uli ni kwa wale watu ambao labda hawana uwezo kutembea, labda ni wazee na pia wanatoka kama kilomita mbili, tatu mbali kwa hivyo hawezi kwenda na kurudi kwa kangamano ila tunaamini wale wachungaji walio na uwezo wa kimwili wanaweza kutembea waje na kurudi kwenye kongamano. And so we, we know that we're going to have 100 our goal is to have 100 participants at this workshop. Basi lengo letu ni kuwa and it's in an area that we're going to be ministering to a number of villages. And so village pastors, elderly, uh, and those who can't walk easily is out of the hundred is forty. Na basi kama wale vijiji wanaotoka mbali ambao hawezi kutembea kutoka kwa watu kama mia sasa tuseme ni watu 40. Instead, and so in column B 15 instead of 0 I now have 40. Katika ile eneo la B 15 sasa badala ya 0 tuko na watu 40. And we've agreed that we'll help folks up to 100 shillings for 4 days of workshop. Na labda tumekubaliana tutawasaidia ili wapate shilingi 100 kwa hizo siku nne za kongamano That's a total of 16,000 Kenyan shillings available to help people get back and forth what we call travel scholarship ambao wanapata jumla ya shilingi 1016 kuwasaidia watu kusafiri kwenda na kurudi ambao tunaita msaada wa usafiri So far uh, so that's 160 US dollars ambaye inakuwa ni dola 160 za so none of that money has been spent hadi hapo hizo amna baadhi hizo pesa zimetishatumika and so 160 dollars is available for that line item kwa hivyo katika orodha hiyo utapata zipo dola 160 line 14 is food for overnight attendees katika mstari wa 14 Ni chakula kwa wale and since we said down here that we have no budget available for accommodation for overnight attendees, we don't have any money available to feed overnight attendees either. And so that generate because I have a zero there, that generates zero total Kenyan shillings, which translates to zero dollars, zero, zero. Kwaewa kwa sababu hakuna kitu pale inaleta Kenya pesa za Kenya sifuri, inaendelea zote sifuri hadi za dollars sifuri sifuri. Okay, now conference food, line 13, item B. Katika chakula, semu ya ba upande wa juu na upande huwa kuingine, it costs a total, if it, we have it catered, it typically costs about 250 Kenyan shillings per participant per day to feed people. Tukiwa labda kuna ule ambaye tumemuajiri kutulisha huwa nakadria kama shilingi miambili ya msini kwa siku kutulisha. And in the spirit of the loaves and fishes, Global pastor training is simply not going to provide free food for everybody. Na kwa roo ya mikate na samaki, global pastor training haita anda chakula chabure mulu wa bure o kila mtu. And if the local people don't want to contribute to a common meal or they don't, uh, there's no value to them for a common meal, then you can simply dismiss them for lunch and they can go and figure out where they can have lunch. Asi wenyeji kama hawata kuwa na mbinu ya kuja na chakula wale wote pamoja 
na hawana hiyo haja basi unaweza kuifika hapo wakati wa chakula cha mchana unaweza waachilia kila mmoja ajishughulisha ajitafutie chakula cha mchana and as daniel will be able to bear witness when we were in the early years of global pastor training that's what we did na daniel anaweza shuhudia kweli miaka ya mwanzo katika global pastor training hii ndio tulikuwa tunafanya bishop ben bahadi who is often our host mara nyingi mwenyeji wetu ambaye alikuwa bishop ben bahati would simply say at lunch time now it, we're breaking for lunch and you can go down the street this way and find such and such to eat or you can go down the street this way and find other things to eat angeleoambia watu sasa ni wakati wa chakula cha mchana na kwa hivyo kwa sababu alikuwa anajua eneo la mkutano anawaambia ukienda hapa na hapa utapata mahali fulani upate chakula cha kiasi hiki ama mahali fulani upate hiki na hiki chakula and i'm going to tell this story daniel now so yes. one day i was I was riding out with Ben we were headed to lunch Abbas is Adith and Dion he siku moja nilikuwa nimebebwa tuko kwa gari moja na Ben na tulikuwa tunaenda chakula cha mchana We had a group of about 100 pastors we were training Tulikuwa na kikundi cha wachungaji 100 tulikuwa tunawafundisha And everybody had headed down the street one way or another to find something to eat na kila mmoja alikuwa ameshika njia ya kwenda barabara upande huu na upande ule mwingine kutafuta chakula chakula But there was about a group of a dozen guys in the courtyard of Ben's church. Lakini kulikuwa na watu makumi hapo nje ya kanisa la Ben. And as we headed out to lunch, they waved at us and said bye bye. Sisi tulipoenda kula chakula wakatupongea mkono wakasema kwa heri. And then when we came back an hour a little bit an hour later, they the same group was there, first ones back waving hi, welcome back. Looking forward to this afternoon. Tuliporudi kama ni sali moja tena wale wale tuliowacha tu pale tukienda chakula cha mchana tena ndio walikuwa tuambia karibuni sana turudi kwenye kipindi cha mchana. And the first day that happened I didn't think much about it. Siku ya kwanza ilipofanyika hivyo mimi sikuwa na wazo lolote kuhusiana na hilo. The second day of the workshop Ben said the same thing when it came time for lunch we're breaking for lunch there's this this yeah. way and there's this food that way. Siku ya pili ilipofika Ben akasema tu kama alivyosema siku ya kwanza kuna naenda chakula cha mchana unaweza enda upate mahali chakula huku ama uende upate mahali chakula mahali fulani And when we left uh, when I went with Ben and we went off in his car to go have lunch Ndipoingia kwa gari la Ben tuende na yeye tule chakula cha mchana I saw the same dozen guys standing there in the courtyard waving bye bye See Nikaona, you later wale, wale, wale. Wale wamesimama tu kwenye kundi lao katika pembeni mwa kanisa wakisema kwa heri tuonane baadaye. And I thought to myself, boy, these guys are really excited about this workshop. They're the last ones to leave and they're the first ones back. Oh, wana sema, eh, hey, hao jamaa wamefurahia sana kongamano hili. Maana hao ndio mwisho kuondoka na pia ndio wa kwanza kufika tunapoanza kongamano. And I said to Ben, I said, man, Ben, these guys are really enthusiastic. Nikamwambia Ben, "Eh, hey, jamani, hawa jamaa wana moto kweli wa kongamano." I said they were the last to leave yesterday and they're the last ones to leave again today. Wao ndio walikuwa mwisho kuondoka jana, yeye ndio wao mwisho kuondoka leo. And Ben said to me, "Well, John, they may be enthusiastic about the workshop, but the truth is, brother, they probably just don't have any lunch money." Oh Ben akaniambia oh mchungaji hawa sio kwamba wamechangamkia sana mkutano kweli ni kwamba hawa jamaa hawana pesa ya chakula cha mchana And that really that really um, got to my heart Na hilo lilikaniguza zaidi moyoni mwangu And I thought to myself here we are trying to build up the body trying to encourage pastors and we're trying to create fellowship among pastors na nikasema basi inabidi tuone tufanye kitu jambo tufanyaje ili kwamba kuwe na ushirika miongoni mwa wachungaji. And then at lunch what's happening? Na sasa mchana nini huwa inafanyika wakati wa chakula cha mchana? We're just simply drawing distinctions between those who have something and those who have nothing. Sasa hapo tunaweka mipaka kuonyesha wenye wana vitu, wana kitu na wenye hawana kitu. And so I began to pray about what I could do and I was having a 
I didn't have a very good lunch with Ben that day. Usually lunch with Ben was always fun, but this lunch was not very fun. <laughs> Nikaanza kuapa nifanye nini na siku hiyo siko na chakula cha mchana kizuri maana kila mara wewe inakuwa mzuri lakini wakati huu nilisumbuka sana. As we came back the same dozen guys were there to greet us in the courtyard. Tuliporudi tena hao watu walikuwa tu pale huko kwenye eneo la kanisa kutusalimia. Welcome back. We're so ready to start. How was your lunch? Karibuni tena. Tuko tayari kuanza. Eh habari ya chakula cha mchana chenu? And it was like I had a spirit conversation with the Lord. I said, Lord, what, what are we going to do about this? And that was pretty much Philip's question to Jesus, wasn't it? He said, Lord, yeah. we, what are we going to do about this? And what did, what did Jesus say to Philip? Yesu alimwambia nini Filipo? You feed them. Aliwaambia alimwambia Filipo, wewe yenyewe wapeni ninyi wapeni chakula. And in that moment I felt like the spirit of God was saying to me, John, you feed them. Na wakati huo nilikuwa nasikia roho ya Mungu ananiambia John, wewe walishe wape chakula. And I thought, oh boy, okay. And so I said to Ben, I said, look, Ben, uh, this is really troubling me. What can we do? Is there anything we can do? And he said, yes. He said, I've, uh, there are women in my church that uh, would be happy to help with this ministry. And we can... Uh, if if you can help with a little firewood they can bring the pots na kama tunaweza kusaidia wapate kuni sisi tunaweza saidia kupata sufuria and we'll make ugali and rice tutengeneza ugali tutengeneza wali and if you can help with vegetables and some chicken or something then we can have a really nice meal Hey, even you can eat it, John. Even you can eat it. Na kama tunaweza kuwa na mboga, hata kuku, hata tunaweza tengeneza chakula kizuri, hata na wewe kinaweza kufaa ule. Yeah, amen. So that's how that's why we started doing food at workshops in order to promote a community meal. Hiyo ndio ile tusababisha tuanze kuandaa chakula katika makongamano ili angalau and I share this rather lengthy story so you understand the context. It wasn't that Global Pastor Training wanted to get into the food service business. Sio kwamba global pastor training ilikuwa inataka kujiingisha kwa shughuli za chakula. But we wanted to help facilitate a community meal so that we wouldn't make distinctions between those who have something and those who have nothing when it's time for lunch. Tulikuwa tunataka tuweke chakula chakula pamoja kama jamii ili kusiwe na mipaka kwa wale walio na kitu na wale wasio na kitu ijapo wakati wa chakula cha mchana. So if, if you're going to be a regional teacher and you're going to a local area, the question is the same question Jesus asked Philip when Philip said, Lord, how can we possibly feed these people? And Jesus said, will you feed them? What do you have available? Yesu akasema, basi, enyi walisheni wapeni chakula, muna nini? You bring it to me and I'll make it sufficient to take care of the need. Niletene mimi, nami nitaitosheleza kutimiza itaji. Jesus didn't say, oh, don't worry about it, brother. I've got a catering service just over the hill and they'll come up with trucks and they'll take care of everything. Yesu akusema, pana musijali, ni wachieni mimi. Now, we're not the Lord Jesus Christ, but what we are saying is that in the same spirit of the feeding of the 5,000, 
we will work with what the local people can make available. And uh, to the extent that we're able, we'll add to it. We'll add to it if they want to have a common meal. Sisi sio Yesu Kristo lakini tunasema kwamba sisi nasi tutafanya tu jinsi Yesu alivyofanya kama watu wenyeji wataleta chenye wataleta na sisi basi tutaongezea kwa hilo ili angalau tuwe na chakula cha pamoja. Can somebody say amen? Mtu asema amina. Amen. Amen. Okay. So for the sake Yo. of our example. Basi kwa ajili ya mfano wetu sasa. Let's say that global pastor training ha- can make a hundred shillings per participant available. Pengine tuseme global pastor training inaweza kutolewa kwa shilingi 100 kwa kila mhusika anayekuwa hapo. For a hundred participants. Kwa wahusika 100. That's 30,000 Kenyan shilling. Hizo ni 1,030 za shilingi za Kenya. 300 US dollars. Bani, uh, dollar, mia, tatu, None of it's been spent yet, so there's three hundred dollars available. So let's say that in uh, the upshot of things, we actually spend three hundred ten U.S. dollars. You know, it went over by ten dollars somehow. To say labda katika hali ya vitu vimepanda bei sasa katika matumizi yake kabisa ikakuja dola 310 na 10. And the yellow's got receipts to show that and there's a 10 dollar deficit now on that line item. Na sasa yellow ako na receipt za kuonyesha na hapo sasa ana deni ma, ya upungufu wa shilingi dola 10 10 katika hiyo sehemu. And there were uh, no there's no food provision for overnight attendees so that's a zero he doesn't have any money to spend there and that's a zero. Basi kwa na chakula cha wale waliokuwa na lala basi hakukua na pesa kutumika basi ni sifuri. He had 160 dollars available or 16,000 shillings available for travel scholarships and he spent it all 160 dollars. Na alikuwa na dola um, 160 ni 1016 ambazo sasa alitumia na zimetumika zote. So he has so, zero dollars now left in travel scholarship. Sasa kongamano katika kongamano amebaki hana kitu yote imeshatumika pale. Now we said in our budget that there was no money available to keep people overnight. Tulisema katika makadiri yetu ya kwamba hakuna pesa za kuwaruhusu watu kukaa wanaotoka mbali wa kulala. So the budget is zero. Katika makadiri hapo ni sifuri. But in the upshot he had 20 people who um, came and stayed and so the local church bought uh, rented mattresses uh, for them uh, for three nights at say a, a hundred shillings a mattress which would be uh, 3000 uh, shillings to 30 dollars sasa hapo na katika hali ya mkutano ikawa kwamba watu 20 walibaki wa kulala na sasa kanisa la nyenyeji ikakodisha makodoro na sasa wakalipishwa shilingi 1300 ambayo ni dola 30 And what uh, what Oyelowo is hoping is that even though he spent money there he'll be able to make it up somewhere else. Na kwa hivyo sasa kila Oyelowo anatumai kwamba ijapokuwa ametumia pesa hapo kuna namna ambavyo pengine ataipokea ataipata sehemu nyingine. Okay, he's uh, got 100 participants now. We're at materials. Uh, 100 participants is 135 shillings roughly to print both the workbooks and the certificates and he's had that done and that's exactly what it came to and so he spent that whole amount katika mafuma vitabu vya kutumia na VAT katika kongamano alikuwa na watu 100 na wote alikuwa nao na kwa kila kitabu ni shilingi 135 na zote ameshazitengeneza kwa hivyo ametumia hiyo shilingi 135 na ndio yani 1013500 ndio hiyo sasa dola 135 and he has zero dollars left in that uh, budget category 
katika ile eneo la makadria pesa sasa hapo amebakia na sufuri since this is a tier 1 uh, workshop we'll say uh, so he won't be selling books so he won't get any money back for that kwa sababu hii ni kongamano la awamu ya kwanza basi hakuna pesa atakayopata kwa mauzo ya vitabu basi hamna chochote anapata hapo uh, he did have to rent the tents and seats and uh, what the guy said he would charge is what he charged and so uh, that money was spent na kwa hivyo ilibidi akodi mahema na viti na huyo mwenye viti alisema atamlipisha kwa hiyo pesa na ndio akatumia hiyo pesa dola 36 and so they uh sorry There's no money left for tents and seats it's been spent. Hakuna pesa imebaki kwa mahema na viti yote imetumika. Okay, now we come to sound and rental. Uh there, we didn't expect us we wanted to use the church sound system which we did so we didn't have to spend anything. Basi tulitarajia kutumia vyombo vya kanisa na kwa hivyo tulitumia na kwa hivyo tukutumia chochote katika matumizi. And then um, T, for whatever yeah. reason, without consulting me, Oyelo decided that he was going to provide T on the last day for everybody, 100 people. Kwa hivyo bila kuniuliza, Oyelo akaamua kwamba siku ya mwisho ataweza kuwa na chai kwa ajili ya watu wote watu 100. At 50 shillings, Kenyan shillings per cup of tea. Kwa shilingi 50 kwa kila kikombe cha chai. But on the last day only, so for Na not four days, days for one mwisho. day. Siku moja ya mwisho. So that's fifty dollars. Yone dollar msini. And I should I should go back and fix this. We said the budget was zero. How he decided that on the last day he was going to buy tea for everybody. Tulisema matukadrio ni sufuri na siku ya mwisho kama wada tumia koke la mtu. So he can't change the budget. He just in, he just incurred an expense of fifty dollars that's not in the budget. So he's over fifty dollars on that item as well. Why do I always go to Barisha Makadrio? Na yena manisha kuamba alitumia zaidi dollar msi ni kuhio and yohi na wenekana pal. Okay, we said that uh, we would authorize up to four hundred dollars for LAC expenses. That's pretty generous. I don't know how he talked us into that but that's what the budget was. <laughs> It has never been that way. So as you know, I So as you know, ali tuingishaje hapo anasema kwamba kwa maandalizi kwa sababu ya wenyeji ni dola 400 ambayo hajawahi kuwa hii ni ya kipekee tu ndio naona tunacheka. So uh, he only spent 200 there. Na hapa sasa anatumia dola 200 tu. So he has $200 remaining in that budget category. Alafu sasa anabakisha dola 200 zilizobakia katika eneo hilo la matumizi ya maandalizi kwa wenyeji. For miscellaneous, uh, we budgeted 3000 Kenyan shillings. Kwa ile hali ya matumizi ambayo haikuwa yanaonekana tukasema ni shilingi 300 kwa sababu ya mafuta ya generator. And we'll say that for uh, for gas for generator let's say I actually spent 40. Na tuseme pengine kwa mafuta tulifikiria 1300 lakini tukatumia 1400 sasa ni dola 100 dola 40. We said this would be typical for a, a regional teacher workshop of up to 100 participants that he would have uh, one registrar to work with him tukasema kwamba sasa mfumo ni kwamba kwa mtu ambaye ana mwalimu wa maeneo anaofundisha watu kutoka 50 hadi 100 atakuwa na msajili mmoja tu we would pay uh, 5000 Kenyan shillings it's a lump sum ana... one time deal ambaye analipwa tu mara moja shilingi 5000 so that's been spent the guys received a stipend Metumika, jamaa mepata, malipo ya kazi yake. And as a result there's nothing left in that budget category. Na kwa sababu hakuna chenye kimebakia katika eneo hilo la matumizi. 
And so what's happening down here is we're just summing up the expenses for the workshop. Kwa sasa kinachofanyika hapo sasa tunamalizia matumizi yote ya kongamano. We budgeted 111,100 Kenyan shillings for the workshop. Tuliweza kuweka katika kongamano hilo liwe 1111. Uh, the US dollar equivalent is 1111 US dollars. Ambaye na toshana na dollars Amerikani 1111. We actually spent 1011 US dollars. Na sasa tumetumia 1111 dollar 1111. And so we have 100 dollars remaining. Na basi tunakuwa na mabasalio ya dola ya miyamoja. Okay, the final area of any budget is getting the team back and forth, taking care of their food, transportation, and so forth. Na eneo lingina la muisho la makadria ni ile ya kuweza kufata usafiru wa kikundi, chakula, na maale pa kulala na vitu ingini. And you see we call these things other related expenses. They're not directly related to the workshop. But without the team, uh, the workshop isn't going to happen. Now, no, not tonight. Ah, matumizi mengine ambaye na usika na kongamano is ijapo kuwa siyo kuamba dio na usika kabisa na kongamano ila bila kikundi akuna bila kongamano utafanyika. And I don't know why we said this, but in this particular case that I I used a model for, we had two team transporting. Oh, I think this was a deal that where Thomas and Daniel maybe were driving, each driving their own vehicle somewhere. So yeah, that was very far in Tanzania somewhere there. Yeah, two people to get back and forth. Hapa sasa ni watu wawili, tunavuka mbaka kuenda na kurudi, kuenda Tanzania na kurudi. So let me make this more reasonable for the typical regional teacher workshop where you're going to be working in your home area, not internationally. So 10,000 Kenyan shillings, about 100 US dollars for gas, transport back and forth. Kusafiri wa mtu mmoja ni shilingi alfu kumi ambaye ni dola miya moja kuenda na kurudi kwa sikizo. Maybe you have to have an oil change. Who knows? Whatever it is, we'll, we'll talk about all that in a minute. So again, it's one team member at a thousand shillings a day, and say you're going to be away from home for six days. So that's a total of sixty dollars, six thousand Kenyan shillings for. Team food, your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner. Utakuwa mbali kutoka nyumbani kwako na kila siku natumia shilingi elfu moja kwa sababu ya chakula kia mshakinyo na chakula chako cha jioni kwa siku sita ambani dola stini. Yeah, and your snacks and so forth. Na chichoto chakatikati pale. Team hotel, again, one of you. Alabda hoteli kwa mmoja wenu. And let's say we're allowing uh, 40, 4,000 Kenyan shillings a night, about $40 a night. Some places it'll cost more, some places it'll cost less. Kuna semu zingine utapata garama iko chini, ingine iko juu. Sasa tuseme kama tunarusu, maybe reasonable to $20. That will be reasonable enough. Thank you, Dan. $20. Yeah, sasa tuseme... Uh, and so uh, for six nights is 12,000 shillings equals $120. None of it's been spent. So there's $120 in that category. Now we make a distinction in our budget between expenses for certified regional teachers and for our candidate. So in this particular example, we have one uh, regional teacher candidate going to participate in this workshop 
as a learning experience that's why we're doing it na sasa kwa mfano huu kuna ule ambaye amekuja kama mwanafunzi wa kuhusika katika kongamano hili ili apate ujuzi and in this case it's a pretty long bus ride so it's 10000 shillings to get over there and 10000 shillings to get back that's why it's two trips a total travel allowance for that uh, RT candidate of 20000 shillings sasa tuseme kwa mfano anaenda safari ambayo that's an international so you put it to one should be one that should be one not two Yes, one. right there one. Yes. So that will will, will be a round trip. 10,000 will be a round trip. Okay. Yeah, locally. And that's $100. It hasn't been spent yet, so there's $100 in that category. Sasa katika hiyo matumizi ya usafiri, mtu moja ndio yeye ametumia 10,000 ambayo ndio 100 ndio yeye ametumika hapo. And again, regional teacher food. This time we're only taking one uh, regional teacher candidate with us. The allowance is for a thousand uh, Kenyan shillings a day for food times six days. It's about sixty dollars, about ten dollars a day for food. Na sasa hapo unapata chakula ni dola shilingi elfu moja mara sita ndio shilingi elfu sita ambayo ni dola sitini. Nothing's been spent yet so there's sixty dollars available in that category. Aja tumia chote basi hapo tunayo dola sitini katika yao kiwango. Again, regional teacher candidate hotel, one hotel accommodation. Two, two. 2000. 2000. Yes. Uh, and say you're going to be six nights. It might be five. It could be as short as four, but it, it's going to be somewhere in that range. So that's 12,000 Kenyan shillings in the case of their money equals 120 US dollars. None of it's been spent. There's 120 dollars in that uh, line item. Kwa hivyo sasa ni ndio hiyo dola 120 na bado haijatumika ndio hiyo bado ipo yote dola 120. Okay, and then uh, team miscellaneous Alafu pesa za ambazo zijajulikana itatumika ngapi za kuwa tunazo za ziada. It's always treated as a lump sum for a group. Yeah, just two guys, it would be a, a hundred dollars, thousand, uh, ten thousand Kenyan shillings. So here it has to be two, if it's two. Okay, twenty thousand Kenyan shillings. Thank you. Yeah. And then so two hundred U.S. dollars for miscellaneous. Sasa na kuwa na kama na shilingi elfu shilingi miambi elfu yani dollar miambi li sa matumizi ambaye na zakutokea ambaye julikani ni nini? So the workshop is over, and you, so you start adding up your team transport costs. Sasa konga mano limeisha onanza kuya sabu. Matumisi yako ambao meitumia. Not including the pre-conference trip which has already been accounted for up there. Na usi usishe. Hile safari ambao tayari ulisha enda huko. Tayari mane hiyo imesha kuisha kadriwa matumisi yake. But accounting for getting back and forth and maybe you had to have, well I don't know Daniel, a new tire or something. Na sasa kama ulikuwa unaenda pale, pengine kulipatikana na ishu, jambo, ikabiri mtumia pesa asiada ambao mkadiria. Team transport came in at $150. Sasa utapata ya kuamba matumizi ya safiri ya wakikundi na tumika dola miyamoja na msini. So, you knew you had to be careful, so let's just say you hit the food budget right on the nose. 
kwa kwa mwangalifu sasa mambo ya chakula ikawa imefikia vile ilivyokuwa imekadiriwa hakuenda zaidi Let's say the team hotel came in at $115 na matumizi ya matumizi ya ya hoteli ikawa dola 115 Uh, and then team transport um, those guys spent all the money but they only had receipts for 80 na wala ambao walikuja wanaofundishwa walitumia ndio nauli lakini sasa receipt yao wana dola wanaonyesha ya dola 80 peke yake so daniel told them they have to give him 2000 shillings back they weren't happy about it but he managed to get it out of them Ambio uh, arudisha ya pesa waliyobakia naye na hawakusikia vizuri lakini hatimaye akarudisha. And because they had to give Daniel money back, they were very careful about what they ate the whole time. Na kwa sababu alirudisha pesa ilibidi wao waangalifu kila walichokuwa nakula wasitumie pesa zaidi. And <clears throat> maybe they even found a little cheaper hotel room. Alaba pia wakapata nyumba ya kulala ilikuwa bei ya chini kidogo kuliko ilivyokuwa imekadiriwa. And the whole team only spent uh, 115 of the 120 dollars of miscellaneous cost. Yeah, people leave a tooth they forget their toothbrush, they need um uh, uh airtime cards uh If you forget a razor, you got to have a razor. It goes on and on like that. Maybe they have to buy a case of bottled water for the, themselves so they don't drink impure water, make themselves sick on and on. Sasa labda mtu alisahau kubeba dawa ya meno, mswaki ama wembe ya kunyoa ndevu ama inabidi wanunue sanduku la maji ili kwamba asinywe maji chafu katika eneo hilo walio wasio wagonjwa na vitu vidogo vidogo hivyo na mnaye So for planning purposes uh we would have our budget was that we would spend up to $2171. Kwa mpango ya kadirio tulikuwa tumepanga tutumie dola dola 2170. And that includes the pre-conference work up there. Ambaye inahusisha na kazi ya maandalizi kabla ya kongamano hapo juu. Now they had 30,000 in there. And so 217,000 shillings or 2171 dollars oops uh let me try to undo that mess yeah okay i don't know what happened there wait a minute Is it the G37 that has met? There we go. Okay. So I want to copy this and paste it here. And then I have to get rid of all the US dollars are always represented in a certain way. There we go. So 217,000 shillings 2171 US dollars and so we had $340 left over. Tulikuwa tumekadiria tutumie 1217 na 100 ambaye ni dola 1200 171 na sasa tukatumia 1000 tukatumia ikabakia dola 340 and so on his personal sheet kwa hivyo katika karatasi yake makadirio ya matumizi Daniel ends up and he's got um 2000 US dollars of expenses on his worksheet. Sasa Daniel anapata amepata matumizi ya dola 2000 katika karatasi yake ya matumizi. 
but he Bye. only has receipts for a thousand eight hundred thirty one dollars. Yeah, elf moja a dollar elf moja mia nana na sasina moja. And we attribute him against that budget uh, according to the numbers you see here. Na sasa utapata ya kwamba makadrio haya na kuja kulingana na idadi ambazo unaona hapa zimeandikwa. So then I say to Daniel, okay Daniel, uh, on paper you have $340 in your pocket. Basi Daniel, kwa karatasi naonyesha kwamba mfukoni mwako ukona dola miatatu na arobaini. And he says to me, well, no, John, uh, I don't have $340. I only have uh, $150 in my pocket. So I say, well, you, you owe the ministry $340 US dollars. But you you've it's gotten spent somehow and we don't know where it went. You didn't keep receipts and we don't know what to do. But we owe you a stipend of two hundred dollars. Now Joe Kwamba Sisi to Nafa to Kulipe Malipa Kasi Kwajiria Kaziako dollar miambili. And so what we say is, we're going to take uh, the 340 that you owe, which is H37, and we're going to subtract your stipend, which is minus H38. Baru rasema basi tutatoa makadrio yako, matumizi haya kwa ele pesa mba ulukoko nayo, ututoe kwa hii, yinginafaa umepakia kwa nayo. So you don't owe me 340, you don't owe the ministry, not about me, you don't owe the ministry $340, you only owe the ministry $140. Why wo, deni ambalo konano kwa huduku unafau lipe uduma, siyo dola miya tatu arubaini lakini ni dola miya moja na arubaini. Daniel still very stressed. Na sasa hapa Daniel anapata mskumo kweda na shangaa, sasa hii naenda na malani. Because he doesn't have the $140 he only has a hundred dollars. So he owes GPT forty dollars. And so we work it out and he gets he gets it eventually. But you see what happens to his stipend. This is not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for Daniel. It's not good for the ministry. But let's say Daniel ends up with uh, receipts for everything and it all balances out. And he's got $340. The money in his pocket matches the money down there, $340. Kwa mfano, tuseme, amefanya kila kitu kazi imeisha kwa na resiti na vila ambao makadria yote. Na pesa aliso nazo mkononi simebaki, sinafatana na vila ambavyo matumizi ya likuwa. So then what happened? Sasa hapo nini wa inafanyika? Well, we make sure Daniel's covered all his expenses. Na kisha kwamba Daniel ameheza kulipa matumizi yote alio kuwepo. He keeps his $200 stipend. Anabaki, anachukua malipa ya kazi yake dola miambili. And he returns $140 to Thomas. Alafu anarudisha dola miamoja na rubaini kwa Thomas. And everybody's happy and praising the Lord for what God has done in the workshop. So yeah, we have a budget, Opaku, and that's how it works. Any questions? Sasa tuko na makadria matumizi vile ambavo Opaku uliuliza jee kuna suwali. Don't everybody speak at once. 
sio kila mtu unazungumza mara moja unaweza zungumza ama uandike swali ama mlikuwa mmeenda muko ya yeah, hia yeah. ya yeah, tupo tuko 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 sasa inawezekana inawezekana hii maana maana kwangu ilikuwa ina kata kata siku sikuweza nilikuwa nasikia lakini sikuweza kuangalia vizuri inawezekana mm. tupate hii video Oh the question uh, is is asking to him he was listening but he could not be able to see the, the when you are sharing the screen so he's requesting if he can get the recorded video for this training Yes uh I'm not quite sure yes we do record um yes I I've got to figure that out but yes Okay, thank you. This is why we focus on the teaching first because it, all of this is necessary to make good stewards but the essential thing is that we have qualified teachers that we know can do the work in the field. And then being a good steward and keeping track of things brings the blessing of God in addition to your faithful teaching. Kwanza kitu cha muhimu ni kuhakikisha kwamba mafundisho kwanza ndio tunalenga, alafu tukishahakikisha kazi inaendelea uwanjani basi ndio hatimaye tunaingia kwa hii ya kuonyesha sasa wenu mtumishi wa Mungu mwaminifu ambao unaendelea kufanya kazi na kuweka kila kitu inaofaa kuwa katika mafundisho. Daniel ask Festo after Jesus fed the 5000 what happened? Did he just uh, let the bread be scattered on the ground and uh, whatever was left over the fish be scattered on the ground what what did Jesus do Pastor swali ni kwamba Yesu alipolisha watu 1500 aliwaambia namna gani alisema vile chakula kimeanguka pale kila kitu muache tu hivyo ama aliwaambia wafanye nini Aliambia wao watunze yale mabaki yeah i told him to collect the remainings Hello. and also to keep the remaining food amen so amen. from first to last that wonderful miracle really shows the lord jesus functioning as a steward of the good things of god kuanzia mwanzo hadi mwisho hilo linaonyesha kwamba Yesu Kristo alikuwa anafanya kazi kama mtumishi mwaminifu wa kutunza vitu vya Mungu. Now we're not Jesus, we can't make miracles like that, but we can follow the principles of our Lord Jesus as we handle the resources that he entrusts to us. Sisi sio Yesu, lakini tunaweza kufata kanuni za Yesu Kristo jinsi alivyotupatia kama watumishi waaminifu kwa kufanya kazi ambayo ametupatia. Amen. Amen. All right brother. Amen. Yes peers. Say amen. Amen. All right. Well Daniel, I don't have anything else to share. If nobody has any questions, <laughs> Uh, I think we're done. Hakuna mwenye ana swali kama hakuna swali hakuna kitu kingine ambacho tunataka tushiriki kama hakuna inamaanisha kwamba tumemaliza. Well, tunashukuru sana. Thank you very much. Let's uh, brother Paku, are you still with us? Do you hear me? Opaku unmute yourself if you can hear me. You. Yes, brother. We are done. Would you close our time together in prayer? Okay, let's pray. Yes. Our heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you the Lord who have made your servant to teach us how to be a good steward for the purpose of promoting your kingdom. 
Father, we thank you for the wisdom that you have imparted into thy servants. And he also imparting this wisdom into us. Help us to grow from grace to grace. So that Lord, as you have beginning your work in us, you shall be able to be a good steward in everything that you do. As Jesus set an example for us. Thank you for this wonderful teachings. We pray the Lord as we are living from here until Friday. Let your Holy Spirit guide every one of us, even those who didn't come. We pray for them. We pray for our various ministries. We pray for this ministry that we have brought in Africa to teach pastors how to teach their fellow pastors so that the body of Christ will be equipped so that the sound teachings will overcome the false teachings. Thank you for what you have done. Help us as we go home. In Jesus' name we pray.